Hey there, are HR issues giving you a frown? Turn it around with Smart HR. We are renowned. Products are expensive, there's marketing stability here, everything is just off the roof. <sighs> it's a lot to ask me, honestly. Entrepreneurs, lend us your ear. We're here to solve your HR problems crystal clear. From hiring to policies, we've got you covered. So there are many efficient ways that helps you to still remain ethical and still serve your clients with the intention of the brand. Tune in, discover the HR world anew with Smart HR. Success is within view. Entrepreneurs, gather near and far. Let's conquer HR challenges, no matter how bizarre. Welcome to Smart HR, the show where we explore the ever-evolving world of human resources and delve into the trends that shape the future of work. I am your host, Chukunon Somodi, and today we embark on a fascinating journey into the heart of a rapidly transforming workplace landscape. Now picture this, a world where traditional office cubicles dissolve, you know, commuting becomes a choice, and the line between work and life blows ever so gracefully. That's right. We are diving headfirst into the future of work, embracing remote and hybrid workforces. And we're going to be doing this with the help of our HR expert. But before we meet this person, let's talk to our entrepreneur for today with a case study. And we have a Queen with us in the studio. Welcome, Queen. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, Nonsoy. Uh, my name is Queen, Queen Oabufu. And I'm happy to be here. Great, great, Queen. It's nice to have you here again, as I said. Um, so Thank you. Talk to us now. We're talking about, you know, uh, the future of work, embracing remote and hybrid workforces. And this is a topic that I feel uh, most organizations are talking about constantly, especially when COVID hit. And, yep. you know, we started knowing what it is to work from home. Everybody started, you know, staying indoors. So tell me. How has it been for your organization? What are the challenges? How is it for you? Hmm. Okay, I mean, since uh, we, we started adapting the hybrid mm. since Zoom, <laughs> since COVID era, and okay. I mean, since Zoom. But then, you know, um, we're coming out of the COVID era and everybody seemed to be going back to work. Okay. And for my kind of business, um, um, I run a production business where we produce African dolls, cloth kids, we produce African dolls, right? Okay. And I mean, our kind of work is entirely physical. It has to be, it, it can't be remote, <laughs> you mm, know? Yeah. We have to be there together because there are processes and there are systems to this uh, production. But I mean, lately, with the whole economy, you know, it's no longer COVID now, it's now the economy. Yes. Right? True. So we're trying to see how we can um, merge, you know, the remote, do the hybrid. But I must be honest, it's difficult. It's challenging. Mm. The last three months has been really challenging trying to, you know, bring in this hybrid. I'll give you a typical example. Um, I, I said earlier that our systems are, you know, programmed. We have this system of this, just like you have in a factory, but as we don't use, use factory, our doors are strictly handmade, 100% handmade. And so we have this process that this person makes this, mm. sends to this person, gets that person, you know, that kind of process. So how does that really work with an hybrid, with an hybrid system? Mm. And so we felt, okay, let's start and see how it would work. And then we started it. The first thing that happened was there were lots and lots and lots of issues, you know, quality control became a mess. Mm -hmm. But then, this is me also trying to put myself in the shoes of my staff. I mean, we're all in Nigeria now, you know. <laughs> and then after that, what started happening, right, and then what started happening was, I started getting, you know, we now said, okay, let's do this. Work three times at work, physical work, then you can work the other two days at home, right? Mm -hmm. But then, the last couple of months, I've been getting this, oh, yeah. I feel like we should work, we should just work at home and maybe once in a week we just come and, you know, drop the mm -hmm. stuff and we'll see if there are mistakes. And I'm like, guys, this, this would work. Because every time we want, even that two days out of the office, it's still like a mess. Mm. And I am, I am one that if it's not quality, we cannot send it out. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it's my brand, it's the brand we're building. 
So if it's not quality work, I'm not sending it out. So it's slowing down processes. It's making me frustrated. And sometimes it feels like I don't even understand. And then up until last week, the latest one is, um, oh no, I won't be available tomorrow. Um, how about I use this day to cover up for that day? You know, so instead of having this strict Monday, Wednesday, Friday kind of thing, it's now becoming, oh, I'll be available Tuesday or rather, or rather I have an appointment. Something just came up. I want to swap Tuesday for Monday. You know, it's becoming a frequent week by week issue. Mm. You know, so this hybrid, it's a great idea, but it's it's becoming a problem for me. And honestly, I, I don't know what to do next. I mean, I'm like, I don't know what to do. I mean, I, I totally understand what you're saying. And I like that you said, you know, it's no longer COVID now. It's also the economy. And you also yeah. try to do the human thing, empathy, and put yourselves in their shoes. But exactly. I mean, it, it, there's a line you need to get to, and it starts affecting your business, just like it's doing now. But, Completely. And it's slowing down processes. We can't mm-hmm. meet up our KPIs anymore mm-hmm. because this problem, that problem, there's this issue with this production and that production. Oh, this person is not available. She's swapping this day with that day. And so we can't achieve what we have to achieve. Ha! <laughs> I mean, it's really challenging. Really. I mean, I mean, I do understand. I understand it perfectly. And the fact that there is no, you know, they're beginning to switch days. They're supposed to be maybe okay. We'll come Monday, Wednesday, then the other days. If you have something to do, if you don't have right. anything to do, sit back. But now it's now like oh, whenever it's free for me. But I mean, that's yes. why that's why the show is here. And you know, I, I like how you've spoken about this. I like also the angle you came through. And this is truly a big challenge because, like you said, your type of business is not something that you honestly you actually you you're trying to make it a to try to you know do the whole hybrid workforce. But it's something that you do need physical presence at least, if not two times, three times a week. But of course, we'll have our HR experts answer your questions. Um, thank you yes. so much uh, for this. Uh, so, of thank course, you. after this break, we'll get back. And, of course, our HR expert will give Queen a solution. You know, what can she do in this issue? Uh, we'll go on a short break and we'll be right back. <laughs> And now let's hear from our HR expert. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. My name is Nanke Estienne. And I'm the lead strategist at CISA. So CISA is a human resource advisory and culture transformation company. The focus of the conversation today um, being the work from home saga, I'd like to address this particular issue from different dimensions before we even get to the, the work from home strategy. Now, the entire COVID, um, the advent of COVID and the after effect has shown us that as businesses and as business owners, we need to adopt and adapt more flexible um, methods of running our businesses. But that also speaks to the fact that a lot of businesses set their visions or their goals for the organization based on emotions. And I don't mean to insult anybody's pedigree or anybody's concerns or anybody's way of doing things. Mm -hmm. But there comes a time in a business where you have to allow the child to grow and morph into what it is supposed to be, regardless of you as a CEO. And I'm going to explain what that means. As a parent, right, you give birth to your child, your child lives in your environment. But as you begin to notice the different characteristics of the child, you start to mold the child along the lines of those characteristics so that at some point the child understands their own specific identity Mm. and can live, you know, can live and thrive and become everything that they need to become within that, that space. That's how a business should be. When you start a business, it is your own prerogative to leverage the success factors, the behaviors, the values that have helped you to build success, to start up the child, but when you to start up the business rather. But when you look at the trajectory or the direction of the business, there has to be a certain type of behavior or certain sets of behaviors that allows that business to grow. That does not negate you as the CEO, but it takes you off. It takes your personal biases out of the business. I may be able to say again that when people develop their, their visions of their businesses, it's still very, this is my baby, I don't want it to go anywhere. Mm. It is not focused on who it will help and the complexities 
of the different demography of people that we have and how fast generations are going by generations. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. In the past, we used to have industrial, the first and second and third and fourth industrial revolution. Right now, we can't even keep up anymore because of the sort of individuals that are entering into the market space, the sort of problem solving and problem thinking sort of people. The person who first of all made the first train could have stayed and said, oh, we want this to be a locomotive train or we want this to be a charcoal driven train. Mm -hmm. But you see that as evolution starts to happen, you cannot have a myopic or limited vision or limit yourself through the boundaries or the confines of what you assume is right. Who are you serving? How is your market going to morph as you begin to grow? These are things you need to pay attention to. So I use a company, I won't mention names because they're not paying us for it, but I use a company who says that their vision is to refresh the world ethically. What that does for that vision is that it doesn't restrict you to a certain type of drink or a certain type of product. It ensures that as far as refreshment is concerned and as far as ethical standards is concerned, we can get into it and it will not distort who we are as a brand. But when you say we want to use this particular product and be the best drink, drink making product in the world. You've restricted yourself already mm. because you cannot morph into it. You cannot morph into other product lines. You can't even morph into what the next generation intends or desires as refreshment. So looking at this business from a from a, an unbiased standpoint, I'm not. I don't know how to sugarcoat things, so I try to say <laughs> it as it is. And idea. you know, through the help of intuition and wisdom, I assume that whoever is at the other end will be able to see from that perspective. Let me even use an example before I get there. I remember working for a an interior design company. The one thing that was this, the one thing that was stopping them from becoming and growing was the vision. Mm. The employees did not see themselves in the vision. I can't really say it because I mean it's very obvious. Mm. The employees could not see the vision. The owner of the business had lost herself in the vision. Did not even realize what her vision was well, anymore. Mm. But you know, by the time we sat down and we went through the journey of how she got here and we decided to say, your vision is really to transform spaces. What that does for, is, for her is that she can come into the studio and decide this is a space. Mm. It, the definition of space is unlimited. So that doesn't stop her from only going to clients' houses, which every other interior design person is doing. Mm -hmm. And that was the liberation that she needed. Even the architects, the interior architect, the designers, everybody could see themselves in that. And they could express themselves in the spaces they wanted to. But I mean, as you mean, she said, this is my baby. I don't want this to happen to my child. And she kept the vision. By now, she would not have had a new location where she is now, mm. designing spaces. And I said to them, even the pole on the bridge is a space. Because now you're not limited mm. to spaces. So if they call her tomorrow to design a stadium for the Oscars, she would do it because her goal is to transform spaces. So the first things first, with COVID and with the advent of COVID, we also need to learn to be flexible. I mean, nobody taught us to start adopting the Zoom platform. The Zoom platform, yes. Nobody, overnight, literally, businesses became digitized overnight, even when they did not expect to or want to. They became digitized. Nobody's, nobody's helped them to make that decision. And so if you have a product where you have only human interference, where I, I saw an ad of a bank today that said, you know, you can check your pensions through IVR. IVR is, yeah. Wow. Uh, yes, IVR is, um, what do you call this 3D virtual reality? Virtual reality, yes, that kind of thing. Even banks are adopting, reducing the amount of human beings interaction with products. I'm not saying that's the way to go for every business, but I'm saying there must be efficient ways mm -hmm. beyond having people. Because again, when you have people leave, marathon, mm -hmm. when you have people leave their homes and come to you every time, already they are disgruntled. So even the quality of the product, because it has to be handmade, it's already compromised. Because you don't know what they experienced on the streets. Mm. You don't know how, it, how long it took them to get here. So even getting there, they would already be compromised. So even the so-called quality control we are looking for, we won't be getting it. 
So there are many efficient ways that helps you to still remain ethical and still serve your clients in the way that in with the intention of the brand that doesn't have to be handmade. Because by keeping those strict and strong processes, what you're doing is that you're limiting how fast your brand can get to the market. You're making your clients to look for alternatives because how fast they used to get it before is not how they're getting it now. So they begin to look for alternatives or forget about the brand altogether. altogether yeah. So you can decide to make small shifts. Yeah, you have all these processes. Brilliant. But also look for other options. There are other brands that are focused on making things homely or making things with home effect or whatever it is or handmade effect. But they make, my daughter likes to knit. She started making knittings with her hands and people liked the product. When the product, when people started requesting more, we had to get a handheld knitting machine that wasn't electric, so it doesn't look, it doesn't, it doesn't take away from, it doesn't deviate from what she mm. typically would do with her hand, but it's faster. And it gives her the output faster. So there, might, there must be other ways. Again, I use the example of the train. If the person who initially de de designed the train had stopped that locomotion, we won't have electric trains taking you from Dubai to Qatar in seven minutes. We won't have it. Do you see what I'm saying? So as business owners, we need to go back and redefine what the business stands for, who we are trying to attract and what we are trying to attract and how we want it to, to transition through generations. I dare say that's why we don't have transgenerational businesses because our focus is on the now. now our focus now. is on immediate gratification our focus is on my sacrosanct processes what if by any stroke of faith your the place where you have your business floods or any natural natural occurrence happens or oh, just like covid what happened in those times did you stop production mm, so we need to be a bit more flexible mm -hmm. now back to the concept of work from home i agree that it's not for everyone I agree that's not for everyone. I mean, doctors, people who are client-facing. Yeah, because I, I was going to ask people, you that. Yeah, mm -hmm. people who are client-facing and people who, you know, leverage computer systems and things like that. It's not for everyone. But you see that it is not for everyone. Do you see? Mm -hmm. But you see that you can create in between the work-from-home structure. You can create more humane patterns or processes that makes people feel like you are thinking about them. Now, don't just do it because everybody says, oh, work two days at home, work one day. It might not work for your environment. But, I mean, have a dialogue with your team members to understand the peculiarities of each of their needs. Do a sum total or an average of it and then decide with them what makes sense. That way I feel included in your decision and your discussion. Now, we can also see that um, light tariff and whatnot is increasing. So if I'm going to have a team meeting, for instance, I might just look for a workstation that already has the amenities I need, no, you need and just yeah. pay for it rather than paying extra bucks for a generator to be on in my office, knowing fully well that it would increase my tariff or the amount of money I'm spending. So again, the whole concept of what I'm talking about is just flexibility and the ability to think outside yourself. You know, we've been selfish for too long. I apologize to anybody that this might offend but it's to think less of yourself and think more about people because when you think less of yourself and think about serving others, trust me, the dividends come back even a lot more. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? So the goal of what I'm saying is really flexibility. Another thing that work from home might hamper is truly your culture, but I don't want to get into that because how many organizations truly understand what it means to have a culture in their organization? And you have to pay me for that information, so I won't even be sharing that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the much I can say. Be flexible. Be flexible. Nothing is cast in stone. Yeah. And if you think that your own is the best and nothing can topple it, mm, you'll be surprised. Because a young child, my child, will wake up and decide to say, okay, you know what, I feel there's a better way and I want to explore it. And it will just take you out of the market. So the more in tune you are with the market, the more you can be flexible and think about solutions that are outside of what you're currently doing, but still keeps, retains the core and the sanctity of what you do, the better. I mean, many of us travel to different parts of the nation, and I know that personally when I travel, one of the things I like to do is to go and, you know, go to spaces or companies that have existed over a hundred years. And you find that they have a proper library. They have a proper 
I've forgotten the word, but it's like an archaeological site mm. where they keep the stories, the history. And you find that it, the ones that deviated from their core lost it. But the ones that maintain their core but still metamorphose according to the changes in the market, they're the ones who are still existing till today. That's the way we need to start thinking as businesses in Africa. Right. So you're saying this entrepreneur and others should learn to evolve and also interact. I mean, it, it, as much as we've agreed that it's not all jobs that are remote, but then she should not limit herself because she mentioned about how she's uh, the doll factory. Mm. And so she feels that going uh, this remote might not really work out for her. Mm. So in other words, she needs to learn how to evolve. As it's not working for you, why are you holding on to it? Mm. What will it do for you if you let it go? Do you see? What will it do for you to say, go and then come back and let's regroup? What will it do? It won't change anything. That's the honest truth. So we keep holding on to it like our life depends on it. You're the best doll making company in the world. Nobody's saying, nobody's saying otherwise. But if if another company was even supposed to come and buy you, the first thing they'll look at is your ability to be loose and limber. Mm. Because that's the sort of mentality you want with your team members. So they can come to you with innovation. They can come to you with new thoughts. But when it is, this is the way, the highway or no way, then you, you stifle the... And please don't get me wrong, I'm not saying skimp on your process in terms of quality, but I'm saying mm. in terms of the way operations are done, in terms of how you reduce the number of people to production, in terms of how you think about what other ways we can maintain the core of who we are without, without losing the spirit of the team. Because, I mean, without people, how do you grow? So it's going to be a tough decision. I, I say be flexible, but it's not easy to make be that flexible. decision. Mm. But if you think it's going to be better for your production, if you also think that you know it will make sense in terms of meeting the needs of those who you are trailing the market for, then go for it. Find out other companies who have done this before because there's nothing new under the sun. So mm. even if your idea is most gracious, you find other people. Did we know that there are people who could cook for 100 years? A hundred mm-hmm. minutes. We didn't know now. <laughs> oh, they were in their that. homes hiding. Yes. We didn't know. Well, until Definitely. one person did it, every other person came out. Did we know there was somebody who could run a marathon in less than uh, one minute. We didn't mm. know until one person did it. So if if one person else comes and says, oh, we want to also be, we are also a dog company. We are, I, mean, I know a friend of mine who does, who is also, for lack of a better word, very ethical in the way that she does her stuff. Mm. Um, she uses thread from water high sense so that she can she can maintain the ecological system of the mm, of what yeah she does all of that brilliant stuff but at a point in time she realized that this was not sustainable so she had to make two decisions she wasn't going to be non-ecological because that's the core of who she was mm. but she had to then go for courses outside of nigeria in fact begin to bring in um what do you call it she even had like support from different embassies to, to ask what are other ways for which I can remain, I can maintain this vision without losing and the brilliant ideas that came out of it. And she's still maintaining the core of her brand. But will she continue using water ice? And there are other things. Now she's just like coconut bark. Mm. She says so, so many things. Ask. The universe is not devoid of information or tools to help you. But a lot of times we like to hold it to our chest. So the decision is that you can hold it to your chest or you can be, you can explore. And even now find yourself in international waters. When people hear that, oh, you don't want to lose sight of what you are what you what you're doing and you need their support on how you can maintain maybe it's one of the SDG goals, how you want to maintain this and maintain that people will give you ideas. Don't scrap yourself. Don't. Mm. There's a lot more that can go. So okay. she's saying let's embrace remote and hybrid workforce. It's the future of work. Thank you so much, Lanke, for coming on the show. You're I mean welcome. I'm pretty sure our entrepreneurs help lent a lot. In fact, you even added spices for her mm-hmm. too so she should definitely touch on this all right we have come to the end of today's show i hope you found this discussion on the future of work insightful i also hope you got clarity uh the conversation doesn't stop here follow us on our social media handles and drop your comments we would love to hear from you till next time i am chukun non so modi <laughs>